Alright space nerds, here's another tutorial this time about the engineering screen and the damage control screen. So here is the engineering screen and we let me explain what you're looking at here. Up here in the upper right we have a, a indicator that shows our shields. In this case we have some damage to the shields. I actually need to probably change this because you don't really have any control over this. Um, so it seems sort of unfair. Um, so that should be something I can work on is, uh, having some control over what's going on here. You can lower the shields and raise the shields with this slider here. Um, this controls whether the shields are up or down, essentially. You can also use this thing to control how much power the shields if you just deprive the shields of power um, you can do that um, so besides this slider all of these sliders over here on the left are your main engineering controls um, this one and two button you have some presets so uh, two basically kind of turns everything but life support off <clears throat> And one is sort of the normal operating mode of the ship. You might at any given time need to reallocate how power and coolant is distributed around. For example, you might want to um, only give the phasers a little bit of power and they can, they'll charge up a little bit slower, but they'll still work. Um, you might want to, you know, you can, uh, lower certain things and you have more total power available for other things um, and here in the middle you have some status so you have um, the top bar in each of these pairs shows uh, the status of the different systems in the ship green generally means good um, as these as things get damaged this bar will go down and as you hover over it it will show you the individual components of each of the systems um, the bottom of each of these pairs shows the temperature and if the temperature gets too high this will start flashing red and <clears throat> as it flashes red the system will start being damaged and when a system is damaged um, it essentially um, makes the power available for the, that function reduced. Um, and if I, for example, um, deprive a system of coolant, now you can see that this uh, sensors is red and this green bar is going down. Basically the system is overheating and damaging itself. And I can reduce the power to it and increase the coolant and then um, the temperature improves. It will not repair itself. Um, if you need to repair the system, then um, and if you spread the coolant around too thin, you just saw there everything starts to overheat so you don't want to do that um, this button here will take you to the damage control screen and here you have a little robot that you can run around with and drive it around using the arrow keys and spacebar will pick up one of the systems and if it's only lightly damaged you can repair it in place you just go pick it up like these systems here are, are not very heavily damaged so I can just pick them up and they repair and then I put them back if they're more heavily damaged then you have to actually drag them down to the repair station which is down here and insert them into this slot and then they will repair themselves if you don't have enough players or you find this game to be tedious or whatever um, there is 
an automatic mode, in which case the robot will drive himself around and will go pick up things and repair them for you. Like, it looks like he's probably headed up to the sensors. And he's going to go... I'm not driving the ship. He's doing... This is happening by itself. Um, so he's going to go repair that one. And then he's going to go find something else to repair. Um... You can also drive the robot using these, although it's not terribly, um, not terribly efficient. You can just use your keyboard instead. Um, this button will take you back to the engineering screen. So these kind of screens are related. Um, there's also this eject warp core uh, button which will eject your warp core. If you eject the warp core, uh, well, you will no longer be able to warp. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Um, eject the warp core. Ejecting the warp core. So there goes the warp core. And it will float off into space and explode, potentially damaging uh, things nearby. I believe it eventually explodes. <laughs> or maybe there's some sort of bug because it sure doesn't seem to be exploding. Um, or maybe it only explodes if, uh, if it overheats. I can't remember how that works, so I ejected a perfectly functional warp core. Maybe it doesn't explode. Um, but now I believe... Interesting. Maybe that's a bug. Because it seems to want to... No. It will no longer let me warp now that uh, I've ejected the warp core, which makes sense. Will it let me eject a second warp core? The warp core has already been ejected. No, it will not. Um, so, I think that's pretty much everything on the engineering screen. Um, these dials here, let's see, uh, one, one other thing. Yeah, the, the uh, life support. Um, if you turn the power off to life support, then you will see this O2 meter start going down. Um, and if it gets to zero, then you're, you will all your, you will die. Your ship will be killed. Um, this fuel will eventually go to zero at which point, um, you will not be able to do anything. You can call a tow truck and get more fuel, or but generally you need to go back to a star base before you run out of fuel. Um, these other three dials, not really terribly important. Um, I should probably work on making them more important in some way. Let's see. Um... So that's pretty much the engineering and damage control screens. Thanks for watching.